Proud of You is a parenting advice podcast and support group for dads hosted by Two Goofy Dads. They are not pediatricians, nutritionists, OBGYNs, psychologists, nor are they authorities on parenting. They're just two dinguses trying to figure it all out. Their advice should not be taken as expert information. Parenting looks different for everyone, and there's no wrong way to be a dad. Frankly, if you're taking the time to listen to a podcast about it, you're already doing a great job. And these dads are proud of you. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Welcome back. I'm Derek Mata. And I am Andrew Goody, and we are proud of you. Uh, this week, we're talking about fur babies, as you might have just heard my dog barking in the background. I was uh, looking at my cat on the floor over here. Oh, oh, and another one right here. <laughs> oh, hey, Moosey. <laughs> uh, pets are, I mean, I don't know about you. I grew up with with always having cats and dogs around. Like, we always had at least two, usually three cats uh, and a dog when we were kids. And I, like, since I, I think since I finished college, no, when I moved back from LA, I got my first dog that was just mine. And I have had a dog ever since. Uh, I want to say I had, I think most of my life we had a cat. It was my yeah. sister's cat. Not really, you know, cats, they just kind of roam around the house. That's why I've got the, this one. Well, I thought the other one was back there. I've got three of them. Um, <laughs> cats are great pets, at least in my opinion, because like they don't require a whole lot of attention. But I've had dogs most of my life. When I when I finally got my hell, I was fucking still in the dorms in the military, and I got my first dog, uh, and I had multiple, multiple, multiple dogs since then. Yeah, well, I I don't know, man. Cats are cats are like the chill roommates of pets, right? They just kind of hang out and like mooch off of your food. And you need to clean up after them every once in a while, but that's about it. Like if you go out of town for a week, you can just like leave them with a, one of those auto water feeder things and just an open bag of cat food and they'll be fine for like, I don't know, but some, some, <laughs> some representative of PETA is watching this episode and being like, what's he going to say? I want to say like a week. I have no idea. I, I, I have no idea I'm not, either. <laughs> I'm not really a cat person. I grew up with them, but, um, I'm, I'm like minorly allergic to cats. And I realized that, uh, after I moved out of my parents' house, having cats my entire childhood and immediately got a cat of my own because I'm an idiot. Um, and then when I moved to LA, I didn't have a cat and I was like, wow, like the air is so much fresher here. And I feel so much better. And then I was like, oh wait, no, the air quality here is way worse. I'm allergic to cats. <laughs> nah, it's totally there. It's better now. <laughs> Uh, and like, obviously I'm not deathly allergic to him. Right. Because like I had one that slept literally on my pillow my entire childhood. Um, but yeah, like I, my house, the biggest, yeah. And the, the biggest thing for me is I like cats that I can give back and I like outdoor cats. Cause I don't like litter boxes. <sighs> yeah. Litter boxes are the worst. Like there, there is not a litter box out there that I have found that I have used that works good for shit. They just track litter everywhere everywhere so yeah. litter boxes are terrible all litter's the same i don't care who you are i don't care what your opinion is it's <laughs> all the fucking same <laughs> but dogs yeah. dogs are great man when you just got a new dog i did I, we we rescued a dog he's apparently seven years old i think he's older than that just because like he does not have the energy that you'd think he would for his breed yeah his, he's his just chill is, hangs out couch potato yeah, he'll sleep on the floor on the tile because it's the coldest, and he'll kind of follow you around and go back to sleep. Yeah, but you know. I that sounds great. I would love a chill dog that just hangs out and is a couch potato. Uh, you've met my giant polar bear of a dog. Uh, <laughs> for our listeners who don't know, I have a 115 pound Great Pyrenees who is uh, three years old and just the biggest ball of energy in the entire world. It sounds very vicious. Not really. <laughs> no, no. He's the nicest. He's the sweetest thing in the world. And like I tell people, like he won't, he's, he's got a big, scary bark. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I mean, like great Pyrenees are, are 
they're pack guardians, right? Like they were, they were bred in the Pyrenees mountain to keep llamas and sheep from getting attacked by wolves. So like they got a big bark and a big presence that'll scare off intruders. Um, but like, he will never bite you. He'll just slobber all over you and lick you to pieces. Like, <laughs> yeah. Cause I like, I even, even dogs with big, big barks. I'm like, all right, like watch me be the one guy that sets you off for whatever reason. Like I'm pretty fucking harmless. Like look at me. Yeah. I, I, I wear a hat sometimes. <laughs> that um, is, Appa doesn't like hats. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm just like, uh, are, are, are we friends? Like it, it, it took him a while. It did take him yeah. a while. And, and, I've heard all kinds of things about how to approach dogs. Like, do you put your hand out? Do you get to their level? Like, who knows? And and the, and the big thing is like, as grown people, something we need to know. Somebody at our kids' level that are, you know, my kids are about the size of your dog, probably a little smaller. <laughs> yeah, they, that's intimidating. So, how do you have a kid? How do you introduce a child to such a gigantic beast? Yeah. One, and that's a huge thing, especially when you, if you have pets, when you have kids, right? Um, Because like, we we got Appa about a year before we had Alana. And like, that was very intentional. We wanted to, I I wanted to get another dog. Um, Emily had mixed feelings. Um, And we knew that we wanted to have a baby. And I was like, if we have a baby and then get a puppy, it will never be trained. It will never like at, it's, it's never worked. We're, we're not going to have time to invest in that dog. We're not going to have attention to invest in that dog. It won't be fair to the dog. It won't be fair to us. Like we should get a dog, have it through pregnancy. And then the dog will be about a year old when Alana is born, which in my mind, I was like, and the dog will be all settled down. Cause it's a year old <laughs> jokes on me. That's not how dogs work. Um, but but it's it's something that I thought about a lot because especially I mean by the time Alana was born right he was he was a year old he was big he was a, a hulking beast I'm like I'm bringing in this tiny little and I mean again first kid right so I'm carrying her like a Faberge egg terrified that I'm gonna break her anyway and then this giant dog I'm like how do I introduce you and be cool about this <laughs> No, I, that's I I'd be scared like this dog needs to stay in a different room unless this kid's in its crib what's funny is uh, Appa. So Appa fell in love with Emily during pregnancy. Right. Um, and part of it was because like he was a puppy and they were growing up, like she was his mom. Right. Um, but also just like, there's a hormonal thing there, right? Like dogs cling to pregnant women. Mm -hmm. Um, if you've ever seen like most dogs around most pregnant women, they're just like right up there. Um, and when Alana was born, Emily was like self-conscious. She's like, Appa's not going to like me anymore. Right. Like this is like a weird, like twilight, the baby, the werewolf's actually in love with the baby, not the girl type of, you apparently never read the twilight book, Uh, (laughs) but but like she was, she was worried. And uh, that was true to a point. Appa used to guard the baby and, and Emily from me, he would like put himself between me and the baby. And I was like, uh, uh-uh, but like, we're putting that down real quick. <laughs> like I'm in charge. You do not guard me from my wife and child. Um, so, so what'd you do but, then? Cause like, that's, that's obviously the things that people go through. Like, what did you do? Yeah. So, so the, the biggest piece of advice that I got was, um, like when you first get home, right. Whether it's hospital birth center, however, your baby is delivered. Um, like whoever, whoever the supporting partner is, right. Because usually mom is going to be holding the baby, um, or, or not whoever is holding the baby, the other partner goes in and like says hello to the dog, calms the dog down because most pets are excited when their owners first get home. Right. Especially from something like a birth where you're typically going to be gone for like a day or two or three, um, and get them settled down and then bring something with you that smells like the baby. Right. Um, so like we, we had a blanket that Alana had been swaddled in that we brought in and showed to Appa and let him like get that crazy new sniff out, right? (laughs) Like, uh, kind of, kind of settle in and get used to it and then bring the baby in and like super carefully, super slowly introduce them. Um, and Appa was great. Appa's again, gentle giant. He's huge, but he's so good with kids. Um, and he just immediately was like, this is my sister and I shall protect her with my life. <laughs> like, just full, full ham. That's why dogs are, are great. Like, well, not all dogs, but some dogs. I keep looking around because <laughs> I'm waiting for these. Oh, there's one of them. 
Oh, they're hiding. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's something like I had, I had that when I was growing up too. Like I, we had a dog that I think it, I think it was the exact same thing. My parents got the dog, like when my mom got pregnant with me. And so for my entire childhood, me and, and that dog grew up together and it was like a, it was like a built-in best friend, right? It was kind of like having a, another sibling, um, but fluffier and who wouldn't, well, I was going to say who wouldn't steal my stuff, but, um, dogs steal your food all the time, constantly, <laughs> but, but wouldn't tattle on you. Cause it's like, no yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. It's like a sibling. That's not a fucking narc. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. <laughs> We're going to use sister, <laughs> but yeah. Like, what, what about you? Cause, cause you guys had Riley when, uh, when Noah and I were born, right? Yeah. So we had Riley, I couldn't tell you how probably a, a little more than a year before Noah was born. I'm trying to think that Riley's always been just a big ball of energy, you know, small dog, big ball of energy. Um, and she still, she loves to jump on people. She still does. So, you know, something we're trying to break and I cannot remember for the life of me, but I think it was like, we had to hold Noah to, so she could, I mean, when she jumps, obviously she's not really big, you know, she's a, yeah. a, a Docs and pit bull mix. So like she could sniff while we're holding the baby. Uh, Ivy was a different story. Riley was not allow allowed around Ivy because she was a preemie and we weren't going to take any chances of the dog doing anything. Uh, we didn't actually introduce them until many months later. And then Ivy lost her shit. Cause she had no idea what the fuck a dog was. <laughs> uh, and it's just, and now they're, now they're, they're best for Ivy. will pet Riley, jump on Riley. He doesn't give a shit. And, and the new dog loves the new dog. Even the, the size of her, she can ride the damn dog like a horse. <laughs> she loves yeah. that dog. Probably likes that even better. Actually, if we're being honest, <laughs> <laughs> we will not let her ride the dog like a horse, but she could. Alana, Alana has tried a couple times. She's like gotten a gotten a grab on Appa's uh, like shoulder fur and like tried to pull herself. And we're like, hey, 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 no, no, no! If you want that, you got to convince Grandpa to make you a saddle. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so like, but what does she do? Will he let her? Oh, I mean, he would. He would bolt. He would take. Off, oh, okay, for sure. Uh, I was like, like I let her like just fucking no, see what happens. <laughs> yeah, no, it would it would be bad. Like it would be oh, okay. Never mind, man. <laughs> I just, you know, no, I think, I think it's something that, and it's one of those weird things that like, I think it's something that both of them, like we could train him to be cool about it and we could teach her how to do it like well. Right. Because that's part of it is she's just grabbing onto his fur. Right. Of course he's going to run away and take off. Um, I was like, what is going on here? Yeah. Like if, if somebody ran up behind you and like yanked you by the back of the, by your hair on the back of your head, you'd probably freak out too. Right? <laughs> like, <laughs> speaking of freaking out. <laughs> he knows we're talking about. He heard about it, it. so he's like, he's like, yeah, I have bad dreams about that. Yeah, well, I, I guess that's a good point. Like, I, I think in, in my mind, it's like, just how funny would that be? Because you know, like the little dog costumes with the little person on the back. The, yeah. the fake little person. So that's what I see in my mind. Like, I want to see this in real life. Well, and we've, we've talked about, like, we've joked about it. Like he could just be our wagon that we take to the park, like put the baby on his back, put his leash on, and we just walk to the park and he carries the baby for us. Like, uh, How awesome is that? Yeah, I love it would that be, idea. It would be great, but it's it's a lot. It would be a lot of time and investment uh, for something that would not actually last that long, right? Because like she's getting much within, bigger and very quickly. Yeah, I was gonna say she's growing really quickly. He's he's tapped out. Like he's as large as he's gonna get, and she is still growing like a weed. She's already probably heavy enough that she'd be giving him back problems if they did it often. Mm. Once she's fifty pounds, sixty pounds, I don't want her just being the reason why he has hip displacement as an older dog, you know? Yeah. Like it, the, the momentary fun is not worth the many years of pain for the dog, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm just, gonna I mean, that being that said, she dog. rides on my back. So, <laughs> <laughs> but you can take medicine and go to the chiropractor. So it's true. It's you true. know of a doggy chiropractor because I don't, I I'll bet you that's a thing. I was going to say, <laughs> Oh, it's waiting for you to tell me like I know one. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know one, but I almost guarantee you. Uh, if nothing else, I guarantee you that's a thing in L.A. <laughs> like oh, for like heck. Chihuahuas and French Bulldogs, Just little uh, little yeah. doggy masseuse. They're they're not real dogs. <laughs> that that is my opinion, and I don't care who says what. I, Chihuahuas <laughs> are just not real. They're they're oversized rats, and they're mean. They are mean. I, that is like as much as Appa has like this big terrifying bark. 
uh, and could, if he wanted to, rip someone in half. Uh, all of the dogs that I've ever been like full on attacked. Actually, it's not true. Uh, I got I got bit by a, a German Shepherd in recent years, uh, but it was a whole situation and it was a whole thing. Other than that one encounter, I've been bit by like five or six dogs in my life, and I've been like charged by dozens of dogs. It's always little dogs. It's always Chihuahuas and wiener dogs. And why are you looking at me like I'm crazy? Why the fuck are dogs? I have seen millions of dogs in my life. Over exaggerating here. Not one has ever tried to charge me. What the fuck are you doing? I mean, I have a beard and I look very intimidating, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I look like a child and they're like, ah, he's okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's fine. No, so like one of the big issues, because, you know, with the, with the new big ass dog that we have is trying to teach little ones to not treat the new big dog like Riley, who we've had for years, because we don't know this dog's training because he's been what the dog is used to. Yeah. Like he, he, he's completely unfazed by the kids. They can come up and they can pet him and they can put toys in his face and he won't move a damn muscle. But the, we say don't run at the dog. Never run yeah. at the dog. Never corner the dog. And toddlers don't quite understand that, but I think something in the back of the mind knows that, hey, I probably shouldn't do that. Ivy will touch a hot damn skillet that's sitting on the counter, but she knows <laughs> not to charge that dog and not to put him in a corner. And it's... Yeah. Well, I mean, predator prey behavior is is pretty inbuilt into into your genetics, right? Like, uh, that... that don't don't piss off the thing that can fuck you up is for most for most people <laughs> for most a, a biological default um but yeah and it's it's that's something that i when because again when we got appa we knew that we were going to have a baby soon like we were we were uh that was the next step in the plan yeah um and so for the year between when we got him and when alana was born I, I messed with him, right? Like not to an abusive degree, but I would like tug on his tail or put, tug on his ears or put my hands in his face and like just bother him. Right. And do like bother some stuff that would irritate him um, to just get him used to the fact that like, Hey bud, you're going to be a child's companion. And this little kid, when it's a toddler is going to pull on your hair and, you know, put her hands in your face and, bang on the side of you and stuff. And like, and again, I'm not like, I, I want to be incredibly clear. I do not support animal abuse in any way, shape or form. And I was like, not just like ripping on my dog's tail, but Does I was just like off? irritating him the way that a child would irritate a dog for a year. Because if he was going to turn and snap at somebody pulling on his tail, I wanted it to be me, right? Yeah. I wanted it to, I wanted to get that out of the way and figure that out and figure out what his responses were. And that's part of the reason why he's so good with kids now is because he's just unfazed. Like he is, he could not care less. Yeah. And like, it's, I, I had a dog that when Evelyn was really little, like would let him, would let her do just kind of whatever. And like, he still had a breaking, she, she's Xena, one of my favorite dogs ever. Uh, she still had a, a, a breaking point. Like she wouldn't, you know how dogs will snap and like not bite. Like she would do that. Yeah. And, and, but not all dogs have that, that restraint. Um, and it's so, so like with, with our new dog, um, we are, we don't ever leave the room. Like, like for one, he will follow April everywhere. That is, that is his <laughs> guard, you know, that he, he is, sworn to guard her for whatever reason he made that his own job um but we don't leave him in the room with any of the other animals or any of the children even like even if we're sitting there on our phones doing god only knows what which i'm gonna make a cheap plug here i don't know how much tiktok you watch the video of him getting adopted a million views worldwide <laughs> worldwide puppy um so even when she's replying to the comments or whatever, like people are asking questions about the dog and all kinds of things. And I'm sitting there on Facebook marketplace. <laughs> yeah. um, we're, we're still aware. Like we are still making sure, Hey, the kids are here. The dog is there. Like, because some, you know, people are so quick to blame the dog. 
at some point you actually have to say, hey, was it the dog's fault or was it the kid's fault or was it your fault, the fault of your own? Um, you know, some people, this is, how, this is how they kind of view their phone and they don't see anything else going on around them. Our heads are on a swivel. I'm, while I'm looking here, I can still see what you're doing. Um, and I feel like some dogs just get unfair, um, li like labeled unfairly. Like, oh, that's oh, a yeah. bad dog because they, they've been a kid. You know, all the, all the jokes and all the memes about pit bulls. And I've owned, I've owned a lot of pit bulls. And guess how many have bit me or any of my children? No. Not a single one. Yeah, they're the sweetest dogs. I mean, that's our older dog, uh, Cora, our 10-year-old, our is, a, is a pit mix. Um, is she? And she? Yeah, she's a... <laughs> she's she's small because she has a she's so when when i don't know she was like probably two years old emily won like a dna kit for her um it was actually even less than that but it's like it's like ancestry.com for dogs like you take a little swab of their spit and send it in and they tell you what the dog is and she's she's overwhelmingly uh what is it it's uh, it's american staffordshire terrier yeah, um, red nose pits yeah yeah she's a pit bull uh, she, like, which she was a rescue dog with a square head. We kind of knew that she was a pit bull, um, but she's a uh, she's pit she's pit three legs, Chow, and Bichon Freeze, which is this like little. It's like a purse dog. It's it's imagine like a like a Chihuahua sized poodle, um, <laughs> <laughs> like that's. Like I that's, that's the best. I probably just offended someone who's watching this, but like, it's just, it's a, it's a very small dog. Um, and so that's, that's what keeps her small. Cause she's only like, she's fully grown and she's only like 30 pounds, probably not she's, even that. She's very um, small. Yeah. When she, so you mentioned she has three paws. She's a tripod. Um, she, uh, I don't know if you actually know this story. We didn't, we, she had four legs when we got her. I was going to ask that cause <laughs> I was curious. Like, did she have the four legs when you, cause so, you, so you remember, we, you remember our hold on before you get to the story yeah, yeah, our good, friend uh our friend sam that we used to work with mm -hmm. he adopted a cat with three legs so yeah and, yeah. and so i just wonder like is it kind of like oh you have three legs i'm gonna adopt you or did it have four now continue with your story so we we adopted her she was a rescue puppy um we found her at a shelter um when she was like they said four months old i think it was probably closer to six months old um but she was like super young right um, and at the time we lived in a three-story condo, um, and she had horrible anxiety, which we knew, but we didn't quite fully understand the extent of. Um, and one day I was at work and Emily was at work cause it was when both of us were still working. Uh, and she was loose in the apartment and chewed through the screen of a window that we had left open for circulation and fell out of the third floor window um, and landed on the rocks below our condo three stories down and luckily lived because yeah, three story shit. fall. Um, but she shattered basically everything between her hip and her knee in her back right leg um, because the way she landed, I'm assuming was on that leg. Um, so we, we rushed her to an emergency vet and they basically said like, Hey, like we can, like we can, we can, there, there are two options here. Like we can amputate the leg or we can take the shattered bone out and put in a prosthetic. But the thing is she was like six months old when this happened, right? We had not had her very long. And they were, they told us the vet was like, if you put this, like, if you get this prosthetic, she is going to keep growing. And every time she grows that bone is not going to grow with her, right? Cause it's prosthetic. Yeah. So you're going to have to take her in for another surgery to have that bone taken out and have a different one put in. And it's just going to be miserable for her. And I was freaking out because I'm like, if I lost a leg, like that's huge, right? I only have two of those and I kind of need them. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I will tell you, I was shocked. She walked out of her surgery. Like I have a video of her drugged up at the vet because she heard Emily in the waiting room and like pawed at the door until the vet tech let her out drugged out of her mind on whatever like lidocaine that they had her knocked out with and she's hobbling on three legs and just collapses into Emily and falls asleep like 
but she she adapted so quickly and like now we take her to dog parks and stuff and people are like oh i didn't even realize that she was missing a leg because she's fast and she's just so adapted to it because again it happened when she was like six months old it's it's been her whole life right she's never known anything else no because like when i went to your house uh, a couple weeks ago a month ago whatever it was like i was like oh jump up here dog <laughs> and then yeah com- completely yeah I, I feel like y'all told me and i forgot or or whatever yeah. it's like oh only only had three legs and she's i mean frankly like if you sit down she'll jump into your lap like <laughs> she's she's crazy mobile yeah i would have never guessed like she walks like a normal dog with four legs yep fucking dogs man i tell you and then these yeah. got cats over here hello i keep looking down at them so animals animals are crazy adaptable um and it it it's really like it's a it's a reminder that like mammals can overcome shit right like i i say like my life would be drastically changed if i lost a leg and it would obviously like my life would be completely different and i'd live i'd figure it out i'd i'd still live a full life it would just look different well yeah i mean you got to think there's there's people that do more shit than i do with two working fucking legs so yeah yeah I, totally i because I, I sit there and i think sometimes like i love driving cars and like man my, my driving days would be over like no, if I if it would be if I tell myself that and I let myself believe that. But animals, like, they're like, oh, okay, cool. Like, guess whatever. I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, and I I I've always liked having pets, um, and I've had man, I've had all kinds of pets. When I was a kid, I had lizards and uh hamsters and gerbils and mice and rats and uh i had a snake for a while (laughs) and uh like we had a bird when i was a kid i can't remember what it was it wasn't like a parrot i think it was like a parakeet i i did Uh, have one of those growing up like blue there you go um it wasn't my bird (laughs) yeah yeah, I think mine was officially me and my sister's, but it was def- it very quickly became my mom's thing because cleaning a birdcage is the worst, the absolute worst. Worse than kitty uh, litter? Yeah, dude. Dude, 100%. Really? Because birds, like, shell their seeds and then leave all, like, the seed droppings and the bird shit, so you gotta, like, clean that whole thing out. It's a huge mess, man. Just dump it. Isn't that why you put paper on the bottom, throw the newspaper, put more, more newspaper? I don't know. I, I had this bird back in... Back in late 1900s yeah i was gonna say i was probably like eight when we had that bird so (laughs) you should (laughs) remember the stories then come on but but i i have always liked having pets because it's it's just another they're they're more members of your family right like um and i I, again being a dog person like i've always just said like you're part of the pack right like in the same way in the same way that my wife is part of the pack my my dogs are part of the pack um but it's it's been really cool watching alana grow up and just have that extra interaction right especially because she's currently uh an only child right like that's not an announcement for anybody i was like we might have kids in the future i was like but like (laughs) she's a she's an only child and uh because we have dogs she's not right like she has the dogs to play with and uh Cora's a bitchy old lady and appa's a crazy spaz ball but like (laughs) she has that interaction and those and those dogs to play with and it's really sweet also watching her just like love them right like she'll just curl up and like lay her head on appa i have a couple pictures of her like sleeping on cora and like oh, that's adorable yeah it's just really sweet you know more See, like more love to go around I, I having had kids since i was what 21 years old 20 years old fucking and dogs the same like i i say get a pet for your obviously if you can afford it if you can train it if you can every, everything that you need to like it's it's those, those childhood memories kind of that american dream like i grew up with with old yeller yes i know how the story <laughs> ends but like you know that golden retriever that no, you run totally. around the, the yard with like kids can learn so much so much from an animal and they can never learn that from just human interaction yeah like totally well and it, it can also be i mean obviously uh most of well my my kid and two of your kids are very young um, but it, it can be a really good, you know, uh, learning responsibility thing, right. For a kid to, you know, it's, it's that classic Americana, like 
the little boy wants the dog and and it's his dog so he has to walk it and he has to clean up after it he has to water it and feed it whatever and like nine times out of ten that ends up being mom and dad end up walking the dog and taking care of the dog and feeding it but like it can be a really good like teaching uh thing for for kids um even even if it is mom and dad's responsibility just saying hey go clean the litter box or hey go clean up the the dog poop out back like if that it still teaches them some level of responsibility of like hey i know this isn't yours but in 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 the future in the real world like you will have to clean up the mess of somebody else it, it, it's a small learning lesson it, it takes a, a a small weight off your shoulders kind of win-win as yeah. a parenting kind of thing and i'm not saying like well, your kids can... must clean up the, the dog shit and the kitty litter like i clean up the kitty litter in my house but lucas will go do the dog poop yeah. Well, it can also, even if it's not like you're cleaning up somebody else's mess, it's just, hey, you're a part of this family and like you didn't make this mess and this isn't right. your dog, but you're taking care of the household because as a family, we take care of our household. Uh, I I didn't do all of the dishes or like I didn't make all of the dishes in the sink, but I'm going to do them because that's how I'm caring for my household. I didn't force the grass in the backyard to grow, but I'm going to mow it <laughs> because I'm taking care of the household, right? Like, turn the sprinklers off damn problem solved <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but no i mean it's it's pet, pets are, are so fun you know you, you just gotta you know watch them when they're younger you gotta watch them again i i'm a huge proponent of it's it's not always the dog's fault yes accidents do happen yeah of course but it's it, everything's a teaching moment your kid is jumping on the dog or jumping over the dog like maybe stop that because all it takes is one miss jump boom land of the dog dogs hurt bites um kids pulling on the ears pulling on the hair hey maybe not do that big thing is food aggression don't let your kids stick their their face in the dog's food bowl riley will not let anybody put her face in the food bowl but if i do it she will back away because she fucking knows yeah this new dog <laughs> that's your food bowl dog i'm not <laughs> i'm not playing this fucking he he for those of you who may have listened to this far, watched this far, whatever, like he is seven plus years old. He's a Belgian Malinois mix. Like he has had training to do whatever. Like I'm not going to fuck with this dog, but he respects me. He does. And again, he has, he will guard April. He doesn't worry about me. Yeah. Weird how dogs minds work. But again, well, that's, that's the biggest thing with a, with a protector dog. And it's honestly, it's something that I still struggle with Oppa with is, Hey, you're a guard dog. Your job is to keep people out of the house. <laughs> Once <Not> they're in, <laughs> they're cool. Because well, either uh, I let them... Uh, no, 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 hold on. <laughs> either I let them into the house, which means they're cool, or they're breaking into the house, and by the time they're inside, they're dad's problem. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to okay, take okay. care of... <laughs> I'm going to take care of the inside threats. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like... <okay. laughs> I was like, let's, let's backpedal here, because... Yeah. Somebody's gonna be like, all right, I'm breaking into Goody's house then. <laughs> yeah. And and they'll meet my nice nine millimeter dog friend. <laughs> they'll meet Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Uh but yeah, uh, and and I think I think that's I think you're spot on, man. Like a lot of people are quick to blame the dog because nobody wants to blame their kid, right? Like at yeah. the end of the day, nobody wants to say, like, yeah, my kid got bit by a dog because he was being an asshole. <laughs> like what oh why'd your kid get bit by that pit bull well uh, you know he was slapping it in the face for 20 minutes before the dog finally like just snapped and it snapped in his general direction and happened to latch onto his arm and that sucks but you know there's yeah, something like... real cool out your window <laughs> oh, usually that window is open when i work up in here and so they like to sit there and watch the birds <laughs> nice um but i mean and that's not using any specific breeds that use pit bull but like yeah if, if you're around a, a dog that you don't know that well, keep an eye on your kid. Like, as, as you know, like when y'all all come over for, for magic nights, I will put the dog away because I, I can't be in every room at once. Yeah. Uh, and, well, and shit happens. I mean, my, my, you know, Riley won't bite any, but Riley hardly fucking eats her, chews her food. So she doesn't bite anything. Yeah. Um, but she did shove Sam's kid down the stairs. So to be, yes. <laughs> Yes, she did. She didn't bite Sam's kid. <laughs> uh, but because Lily was like, come on. And Riley's come on with, with in our household is, hey, come on. Yeah. Get up here. Lily just happens to be about 
this tall. <laughs> so yeah. Riley's like, oh, you want me to jump on you? Oh, there happens to be stairs there. Like it was a, a, a series of unfortunate. It, yeah, no, it was I it was not intentional or malicious in any way, shape, or form, but Moose. We have a new guest. This is Moose. He is going away now. <laughs> he does not want to be a guest on the show. <laughs> uh, such a he he's a he's the one that doesn't care for anybody. As as you know. Orange yeah. tabbies like you, Moose doesn't really care for anybody. I was gonna say Moose loves me and no one else. <laughs> okay, well, you know where I live. Uh he's right there. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us today uh to talk about our our furry children uh that we love so much. Uh or or feathered or scaled or whatever other kind of pets that you have. Um I, I think that just having a pet is a really cool part of uh, being a family. And if you choose not to, that's okay too. Yeah, uh, judging. We say it all the time. There's no wrong way to be a dad. Um, but uh, you know, it's, it's, there's, there's so much that our kids can learn from our pets. And, and frankly, there's so much that we can learn from pets. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, this is, this has been a fun little introspective into just how crazy our dogs are. <laughs> <laughs> Or our cats, because or our cats in your case. Well, that one's sleeping. Oh yeah, I don't know because I got you know I've got I've got five five animals and, and three kids in my house. So, <sighs> anyways, continue. <laughs> Braver man than I, Derek. Uh, <laughs> if you could share this video with your friends, um, we are always trying to get the word out that uh, we exist because this podcast uh, has been has been kind of. Uh, low key shadow band on a couple of sites. Um, we're, we're just not hitting the algorithm. Well, um, so anything you can do to help us get the word out, um, like comment, leave us a review on, uh, whatever podcasting software you're using for this, whether it's Apple or, or Spotify. Um, those reviews really do mean a lot. Um, they, they help boost us in the algorithm. Um, YouTube likes comments, subscribes. Uh, if you're subscribed, turn on your notifications. That also helps kick us up in the algorithm. Um, but really at the end of the day, we just, we appreciate every single person who's, uh, spending time, uh, listening to us yammer on about our pets and our lives and our kids. We should probably wrap it up for the day. Uh, until next week, I'm Andrew Goody. And I'm Derek Mata. And we are proud of you.